welcome back to GP Outdoors. You guys know me. I try to stay away from politics or any type of drama on this channel, but I gotta speak up. So I got a little rant today. If you're a sledder, in other words, you ride a snowmobile and you're a snowmobile enthusiast, stick around for this video. I think there's an important message here, especially if you're young. So for context, it's the weekend. Today is a Sunday, which means of course yesterday was Saturday and I wasn't here. I just pulled in today to my gate and I got to see this. Now for you folks that ride a sled, you know exactly what this is. You got it. Despite all of the private property signs, I got somebody, some Yahoo, that decided they were gonna cut across my front lawn and try to make it up my driveway, again. I know they're young or fairly new to snowmobiling, and I'll tell you why there are two clues that give it away. First clue, anybody that's had any experience riding a snowmobile could have done a three-point turn in my driveway here without ripping up my driveway. So I know that they're fairly new to snowmobiling because I certainly wouldn't have needed to dig that track into my gravel. Second thing, anybody raised in my generation was taught to respect landowner property. In other words, they would have respected this sign, which is an official sign from the Federation of Snowmobile Associations here in Ontario. It's not just my little sign I put up on the property. There were in fact two riders this day, and they had the audacity or the balls to drive right beside the sign, prohibiting them from driving up onto this property. Here in Ontario, we're privileged and fortunate enough that we have, I believe, the last facts released by the Federation was that there was about 33,000 kilometers of pretty much all contiguous trails throughout this province. That means that basically you can start or jump on a trail about 100 kilometers south of me and you can go just about anywhere in the province from one trail to another. They pretty much all connect. However, as you might imagine, there isn't that much government land that is contiguous throughout the province. So the Association of Snowmobile Clubs relies on good faith and the kindness of private property owners to bridge the gap between government lands. In other words, it's contiguous because a very high percentage of that 33,000 kilometers runs through private lands, farmers fields, private property owners like myself or my neighbor to ensure that one trail can connect to another. How do we get those 33,000 kilometers? Well, first and foremost, there is literally an army of volunteers right across this great province that on their own time and their own dime constantly maintain and group all these trails. Second thing, we owe a big thanks to a whole lot of private property owners or landowners, farmers, people like myself or my neighbor who have big chunks of property that make it possible for somebody like myself to get on this sled, head off down at the end of my lake and literally within 50 feet of the end of this lake, there's a trail and I can get on that trail and I can literally run this province for the next week and never have to double back on the same track twice. That's how big it is. When I was young, I was fortunate enough, like many of you in my age group, to be taught to respect private property, not to leave garbage on the trails or to drink on the trails or to speed on the trails and to respect the privilege that we have. But there seems to be a new breed of sledder over the last few years that's emerged. And literally, if you check with the Federation, there are now thousands and thousands of kilometers of trails that are no longer accessible because landowners, like my neighbor, have had enough. They're sick of picking up the garbage. They're sick of the bad language and the parties that go on on their properties in the evenings. They're sick of people abusing the trails or going off the trails. Farmers do not like it when you run your snowmobile across their fields. That's why they agree to let us take 15 or 20 feet on one of the boundaries of their property to get through to the next trail. A perfect example that you folks saw in my snowmobile video a week and a half ago. 
I showed you where this trail now dead ends. That trail used to be a major connector between where I was on that rail bed and getting to a main trail about 15 to 20 miles southwest of me, which would take me now south another 100 miles or so, or 100 kilometers. It's cut off now because the landowner has had enough. So they sever the agreement. What I didn't show you on that video two weeks ago is how much of our day was spent running the side of a highway or a county road. And anybody running a two-stroke knows you gotta constantly bank that machine every few minutes or it's gonna overheat. It's miserable. It's certainly not the pretty views you guys got to see, which is what it used to be. But more and more, landowners are severing those agreements, cutting off access to their private property, which means that we have to run more and more roads. It's just the old saying, we all suffer because there's a few out there that just won't be respectful. So here's a classic example of why my neighbor finally after decades cut off access to this right of way through his property to snowmobilers. And I cannot tell you the countless number of times I came up over the steep hill and sure enough found beer bottles, pop cans, garbage, stogies, spent, all kinds of paraphernalia from guys that would pull up into this little clearing here at the top of the steep hill and they'd use it as a rest spot leaving all their garbage. A lot of people I found out over the years actually use this as a meeting place between trails. Another good reason why my neighbor finally said enough is enough is that he has four young children. And although a lot of you folks don't think the steep hill looks that steep on camera, it's steep enough that his children, they love tobogganing down this hill because it actually is steep enough to have a lot of fun on. And it just became too often that he was worried about his kids playing on this big steep hill when you've got snowmobilers screaming through this driveway like it's a racetrack. You folks may recall two winters ago after he cut it off and I mentioned to you all of a sudden everybody found a way through my property to get back out onto this right of way or this driveway 40-45 feet in front of my front window. You might not think it's a big deal but just picture 200 or more two-stroke sleds screaming 40 feet past your front window when you're trying to have dinner with your family. That's why I put the signs up. That's why I contacted the Federation of Clubs and asked them for formal, specific signs that I could put up that hopefully people would respect. Not so, apparently. And well, if you've been watching the channel for the last few years, you'll know that right after access was cut off, I knew there'd be yahoos like these two guys trying to get across my property, which is why I spent the money and the time and effort and put a snow fence up right across the shoreline. I kind of figured after a few years we should be okay. People kind of get the hint. Well, once again, I'm wrong. So many folks that are new to the channel will constantly almost criticize me because you see me driving my tractor in what is my own driveway with my four-way flashers on my headlights and a yellow beacon. This is why, because I don't know when the next sled is gonna come screaming around this corner right here. Does this look familiar to you guys that have been with me about three years? Right here where I'm standing is where it happened. You'll recall, it was right after I got my big tool rack. It was about three or four weeks later. I had a big tree that came right down across the driveway here, just past this big corner. You see behind me, this is the big hill I refer to. Hey, I pulled the tractor up, put my cones out, had my four ways on, pulled out my chainsaw, and I started cutting up that tree right about here. I had PPE on my ears, I had the chainsaw ripping, and I didn't hear him coming. Just after I finished my last cut, I stood right here, in approximately this spot, right beside the back of the tractor, beside the big tool rack. And as I was shutting the chainsaw off, I could hear something in the background. And sure enough, it was the scream of a two-stroke. And he just came hurtling around this corner. He had one knee down on the driveway. And as soon as I saw his posture, I knew he was screaming really fast. I th literally threw the chainsaw and I jumped over here into the snowbank. He was coming so fast, he lost control through here. Just missed the big tool rack of my tractor, went off into the side of the forest there and eventually recovered 
into the driveway down there. Didn't even bother to stop to see how I was as I was picking myself up out of this snow bank right here, brushing the snow off. I looked up, he turned around, didn't even lift his helmet, waved his hand in the air and drove away. For reference, I pulled the tape measure out of my big tool rack and it was 10 inches between his right hand ski and the side of that big tool rack. Just a few examples as to why the landowners are cutting off access to all of us. It's got to stop. It does. And it starts with all of us. This problem is getting progressively worse. Everybody's aware of it. Our provincial government's aware of it. The association's aware of it. And more and more landowners keep severing those agreements. Guys and gals, we have a beautiful opportunity here to go through Ontario on a sled, see some sites a lot of people don't ever get a chance to see. And there's a few folks ruining it for us. I think it's important to recognize that there's a bigger issue here than just me having fun on a weekend or my buddies going for an eight day trip across Ontario and into Quebec and all the way back down a separate set of trails to come home. There's a lot of people whose livelihood depends on the snowmobile traffic in the wintertime. Here in Ontario, we have more than 470 separate, unique, individual municipalities. And there are even more small, tiny little towns or hamlets across this province. When guys like myself and my buddies or so many of you, in fact, all 85,000 permitted snowmobiles in this province, go for your day trips or for two or three days or a week for your vacation, we go through the trail maps, we plan where we're gonna have lunch, where we're gonna find a motel, at the end of you know, our 300 kilometer run for the day, where we're gonna sleep, where we're gonna get breakfast. All of these things are usually found in these tiny little, little, literally four corner towns. You know, there's a mom and pop diner, a mom and pop uh, hardware store, a grocery store, and there's a gas station. We fill up, we eat there, we spend money in these tiny little towns. And in the wintertime, this is their livelihood. And as more and more trails, get shut down and less and less snowmobile traffic is able to make it to these tiny little towns, these people hurt because this is their economy in the wintertime. So it's just so critical that we recognize the impact we have on these tiny little towns, these mom and pop diners that are waiting for that snowmobile traffic for breakfast, lunch and dinner. They know we're coming through the trails, they're waiting for us. And this is literally their economy in the wintertime for a lot of these tiny towns. So the rant today, I'm appealing to all of you people that are snowmobile enthusiasts. Please, respect private property. Don't litter. Don't drink. Don't go screaming through farmer's fields anymore. Let's try together to get back the confidence of these landowners and get some of these agreements back in place. Because at the end of the day, you're not only ruining it for all of us, you're ruining it for yourselves. We have a beautiful treasure here in Ontario. Let's try to keep it. Cheers.